Hi guys, welcome to Empowerin and welcome to Anatomy 101. This is the 25th video in this video course. If you would like to see the entire course, make sure you click the link above. In this video, we're going to review the different muscles of the legs, including but not limited to the gluteus maximus, the gluteus minimus, the abduction and flexion muscles of the legs, the Sartorius, and more. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. Without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Muscles that control the movements of the thighs and knees arise from the pelvic region and cross the hip joints. The muscles are grouped into anterior and posterior muscles and thigh adductors. The anterior muscles have two types of muscles, psoas major, that is long and thick, linking the femur with the lumbar vertebrae. Its functions are to flex the thighs. Iliacus is the second anterior muscle and is very large and shaped like a fan. They are the major thigh flexors and produce the walking movements. It occurs lateral to the psoas major. The posterior group contains the following muscles. First is the gluteus maximus, which is considered to be the largest muscle in the human body. It links the femur with the sacrum, ilium, and coccyx. It extends the thigh and assists the lower limb straightening during movements. Gluteus medius is the second posterior group and is partly inferior to the gluteus maximus, connecting the femur and the ilium. This muscle is involved in thigh abduction and medial rotation. The third is the gluteus minimus that is also inferior and functions the same as the gluteus medius. Tensor fasciae latae is the last posterior muscle and links the ilium to an iliotibial tract all the way down the leg bone tibia. The iliotibial tract is involved in medial rotation of the fleshy thigh and its flexion. Thigh adductors are the last group and contain the percutaneous muscle linking the femur with the pubis spine and are involved in abduction and flexion of the thigh. A second thigh abductor is the adductor brevis muscle that is triangular in shape and short linking the femur with the pubis bone and is involved in the lateral thigh rotation and flexion. Adductor longus is the third muscle and is functionally and anatomically similar to the adductor brevis, except that it's a little longer. The fourth muscle is the adductor magnus and is the longest of the adductors. It is also triangular shaped and links the femur with the ischium. It is involved in thigh abduction, extension, and assist in flexing. Gracilis is the last thigh abductor and is also long, appearing like a strap linking the tibia with the pubic bone. It is involved in leg flexion at the knee region and adduction of the much bigger and muscular thighs. Muscles that move the leg and ankles are fewer and are also divided into flexors and extenders. The first flexor is biceps femoris and is attached to the ischium and the femur simultaneously and connects to the rear ends of the tibia and fibula. It is famously called the hamstring muscle, with the hamstring being a tendon attaching to the muscle. The second flexor is semitendiniosus and is also a hamstring linked to the muscle and appears in a band linking the proximal tibia with the ischium. Semitendiosus muscle medially rotates the leg and flexes it while extending the thigh. Semimembraniosus is the third muscle and is also a hamstring muscle medially located to the posterior thigh and connects the tibia to the ischium. It's involved in thigh extension, medial leg rotation, and flexion. Sartorius is the last leg flexor and is a long muscle that also resembles a strap and connects the tibia with the ilium. 
extensor muscle that is involved with the leg movement is only one group called the quadriceps femoris found laterally and anteriorly to the thigh composing of the vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, and finally the vastus medialis muscle. All these muscles link both the femur and the ilium to the patellar tendon that extends as a ligament to the tibia. Foot movement is through the use of numerous muscles, mainly the eviter, plantar flexors, and the dorsal flexors. Dorsal flexors contain the tibialis anterior that is a long muscle and it is spindle-shaped, anatomically situated anteriorly to the leg. It originates on the tibia surface and medially passes superficial to the distal tibia. Its contraction stimulates dorsiflexion and the foot undergoes inversion. A second dorsiflexor is the fibularis tertius of average size linking the side of the foot laterally to the fibula. Its functions are similar to the tibius anterior. The third dorsal flexor muscle is the extender digitorum longus and also is laterally located on the leg posterior to the tibialis anterior muscle. Origin of the extensor digitorium longus is the proximal tibia and the long fibula shaft. Extensor digitorium longus muscle is involved with the dorsiflexion foot extension and foot eversion. The final dorsal flexor is the extensor hallucis longus, linking the great toe with the anterior fibula. Contraction of the extensor hallucis causes foot inversion, the extension of the great toe, and dorsiflexion. Plantar flexors are the other type of foot muscles and consist of several muscles. The first one is the gastrocnemius. It is located posteriorly to the leg and forms a portion of the calf. The digital gastrocnemius links with the calcaneal tendon that moves distally to attach to the calcaneus. Gastrocnemius muscle is a flexor with a lot of power and propels the body forward during running or walking. This muscle causes leg flexion in the knee region. Soleus is the second plantar muscle. It is a very thick muscle adapted to its function by being flat. Anatomical location of the soleus is inferior to the gastrocnemius muscle, but they link together forming the calf. The origin of the soleus is the tibia and fibula and attaches to the calcaneal tendon. This major plantar muscle works together with the gastrocnemius muscle, producing the plantar flexion activity of the foot. The third muscle of the plantar flexor group is the plantaris, which connects the heel and the femur. Its contraction causes flexion of the foot and knee. Flexor digitorum longus is the last plantar flexor muscle originating from the posterior tibia surface and links with the foot where the tendon extends from it and splits into four attaching to the terminal bones forming the four lateral toes. It aids in flexion of the foot, lateral toes, and foot inversion. These plantar muscles form the intrinsic foot muscles. The word intrinsic means originating from. Another foot muscle is the inventor group, which has only one muscle called the tibialis posterior and links the ankle with the tibia by a tendon. It is involved in plantar flexion and foot inversion. Similar to the avatar group, the avatar group contains only one muscle called the fibularis longus that is a long muscle and is similar to a strap that is found on the lateral region of the foot. It links the foot with the tibia and fibula through a tendon. It causes foot aversion, flexion of the plantar, and structural support to the foot's arc. All right guys, I really hope you liked this video going over the different muscles and the legs. I hope you learned a ton. 
This is the 25th and the final video in this Anatomy 101 series. In order to view the entire course, make sure you click the link above and you will have a link to the entire Anatomy 101 course. If you would like to see an Anatomy 102 course, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up and also post a comment on where you would like this course to start at. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I have uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, there. There you can join your classmates in learning how to strategically read and review the textbook, how to strategically read and review the PowerPoints, and how to get the most out of lecture and group study. There I share all the tips on how I went from failing anatomy to acing it, and I've helped thousands of other students to do it as well. So thank you guys again so much for watching this course, Anatomy 101. And also thank you so much just for being there. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!